uh, Axe Knight Mon, um, Ball Mon, Baba Mon, uh, Baby D Mon, um, Barba Mon, uh, Bio Stegamon, uh, Bergermon, um, Chibikmon, uh, let's see, um, Kanamon, um, Evil Beast Laylamon, uh, Examon, uh, Fujinmon, um, Fufumon, and probably Gomamon, I would say, um, are like the few Digimon that I would trust with, uh, the American government. Hey everybody, welcome to the Cosmic Panel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, uh, our weekly polls. Back at it with the weekly polls. Y'all already know what it is. Y'all already know what's going on. If not, then, then what, the, what, what, thank you for joining, but also, <laughs> well, welcome to like 14 other episodes. <laughs> yeah, go, go through them. Pick up, find some new books to read. Um, yeah. There's some new stuff coming out this week, some number ones, um, some ongoing uh, books. So yeah, let's get into it. So first up, I got um, Defenders Beyond number five. Oh, you're going with that first? This is the uh, culmination of the Defenders uh, series. This is kind of like a volume two of Ewing's Defenders run. And uh, it's been it's been an absolute blast. They're gonna enter the House of Ideas, which is Marvel itself, uh, basically. <laughs> so this is gonna be really interesting. And um, this very interesting team of uh, America Chavez, um, Galactus' mom, Taya, uh, Blue Marvel, Tigra, and Loki are gonna wrap up this uh, series. Um, and maybe in the future we'll see yet another Defenders installation from uh, Ewing. Yeah, I wonder uh, if Beyonder will be uh, in the quote-unquote Marvel Universe from now on. Like, maybe he just gets too powered and maybe he just comes in. Yeah, maybe he just hangs out. Or maybe he's just like, Loki, uh, do you mind if I crash at your crib for a little bit? Yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's a sick series. The art is amazing. And I mean, I've been... Last issue was cool. Like, Loki being given the, the mask. Yep. So definitely worth checking out. Um, if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, really excited to see how this wraps up. What's your uh, first pick, Lucas? My first pick is Once Upon a Time at the End of the World. It's a new number one, fully new. Uh, basically what's happening is it's a love story between two characters literally at the end of the world. So uh, the cover has them like in gas masks, literally oh. trying to kiss. <laughs> Jason Aaron. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, no, that's that's the wild thing. I don't I don't know what it is with recent arter, uh, uh, writers deciding to uh, make romantic stories from Tom King to this, but it's very interesting and I kind of don't expect it out of them. So, but yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, I haven't seen uh, anything from Boom on your list in a long time, so it's cool. Next up for me, I'm going to go with uh, Deadly Neighborhood Spider Man number two. Okay. Um, I've really been enjoying the um, art in this book. You know, it's it's not the most complicated story yet. I got to see where it where it goes, you know, if they're going to have more of a mystical explanation for what's going on and what Peter's seeing, like the visions and stuff. Um, yeah. But the art has very much been worth it. Um, the art is insane. Like, the art alone is worth picking up this book. Yeah. Oh, Juan... Juan Fer, Ferreira. Ferreira. Yeah, yeah, Ferreira. A lot of, like, Uz, Uzumaki-esque inspirations, I feel like, from the writing... I mean, from the art. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you ever read Uzumaki or looked at the panels from that, but I've seen um, some panels, yeah. So you know exactly, like the 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 corridor of Peters, mm -hmm. like like it looked exactly like something from Uzumaki. No, I, I, I like I like the art for the book. The story isn't that complicated, but it's cool enough. Yeah. Hopefully, it it goes somewhere else, but uh, I'll be happy to pick this up for the art. I like some abstract painterly art for Spider-Man any day, like uh, the Marco Rudy Marvel Knights. Next up for me is Janis Vell, Captain Marvel. Hmm. Um, been a very interesting book. Um, it's been using a lot of obscure characters that have not been in Marvel Comics for a while now. That's always nice to um, hear. Everyone from Death to uh, Rick Jones, Janis Vell, obviously, and like more of the Marvel family have been used. And it's pretty nice to see them kind of get spotlight after so long. But yeah, uh, right now, Captain Marvel, or Jenna's Vell, 
is going to be fighting off against death because uh, death does not want to get uh, let go of uh, Rick Jones's girlfriend. Oh, okay. Or former former wife, someone along those lines. So it should it should be interesting. Um, next up for me, I got Midnight Suns number three. This has been a very cool supernatural Marvel book. You know, amongst the corners of the Marvel universe that I love the most, it's you know, like I said, the cosmic and the supernatural. Um, this is a really interesting uh, grouping of of uh, heroes, and um, we're getting a look at Agatha Harkness for the first time in a long time. I feel like you know we haven't heard from her since maybe the early two thousands. I feel like. Yeah, since disassembled. Yeah. And that was just like, just to tell Wanda that her kids weren't real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was like, hey, your kids aren't real. Okay, bye. And this new character, uh, Zoe Laveau, has been really interesting. Excited to learn more about her and um, see what secrets she holds and, you know, how um, this uh, apocalyptic vision comes to fruition. And uh, yeah, this has been a really fun book. Uh, we get to see Spirit Rider. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in a, in, a, in a group setting, which is neat. And uh, yeah, uh, excited to continue to read this. I believe this is just a five-issue um, book. But uh, yeah, this will be fun. Yeah, it's kind of wild to see Spirit Rider just fight on par with magic. Because that makes sense. Like, they're both yeah very high-level characters. Um, ne- I really hope that they boost Nico, because right now Nico has nothing. I think it's cool that she picked up Strange's axe... But besides that, I don't know what they're going to really do with her. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they kind of did screw her character up by, like, getting rid of the quote-unquote thing that gave her her powers. Which, I mean, it was cool that, like, oh, you're getting rid of her major weakness, but then we never got a continuation of that (laughs) to, like, fix it. Whoever, like, left off with that, I feel like was just, like, that. they thought that was, like, the final thing for the character for a long time. But then they brought her into this book shortly after, so... And you can't really have, like, a character like Nico basically just be a human that happens to know magic but can't use any of it. Like, yeah. it just doesn't work that way, so. Yeah. What's next for you? Next up is Action Comics uh, 1049. <laughs> we are close to Action Comics 1050, which will be pretty monumental. And yeah, I mean, so far, uh, this this story has been really cool. Superman has come back. Uh, basically been reforming the super family. Um, The writer has been specifically stated that he was going to focus on that. So Steel, Supergirl, Superboy, Connor, uh, like Superboy, Connor Kent, Superman, uh, Jonathan Kent, Crypto, uh, and all these different characters are coming together. Plus uh, these two new characters, Osulra and Othara, who are basically kind of acting as adopted kids to Clark. He saved them from War World, and basically, um, he decided that they were. I mean, they only knew War World, so they only knew how to kill, and fight, and etc. So, like, this is the first time that they've ever had a chance to not <laughs> fight murderous. for survival. Yeah, and they're part Kryptonian, so it <laughs> kind of gives everyone who hated that John Kent got aged up the chance to basically see Clark become a father again. Interesting. Of, while still keeping John as a teenager, mm-hmm. which I think is really cool. It's a good balance. Um, it's nice to see Clark really deal with the trauma of having his son aged up. One of the characters that tries stealing the kid is Orion of the New Gods, hmm. or should I rather say now the Lord, uh, the leader of Apocalypse. Oh, um, that happened in. Uh, um, so in Justice Incarnate, yeah, he became the, the leader of Apocalypse. Right, right, right. Because Darkseid was like, fuck it, I got more important shit to do. So right now, Orion is literally the leader of Apocalypse, so uh, he is trying to steal Othara from uh, Kal-El. And when he says that he wants to, he's going to take him, Clark has a flashback to when his father took John, And immediately, Clark gets super pissed. He's mm. like... D- he throws hands immediately. So right now, this this issue is going to have Clark versus not only Orion, but also Kalibek. Oh, nice. So uh, it should be interesting. I love New Gods. But yeah, so far they haven't really shown off much of their powers. And they've been kind of boiling a Metallo-Lex Luthor subplot in the background. Okay. Where cool. Lex Luthor is like gaslighting and blackmailing Metallo. 
Okay. To uh, b- become Metallo again because Metallo is dying. Like he's actually dying from like kryptonite poisoning. Oh wow, that's cool. Um, and I love so, Metallo. I, I love Metallo. He's yeah, he's been so, a cool character. So he's only he's only stuck. Uh, he's stuck in a prison basically, where the only person that visits him is his sister, and uh, Lex Luthor's like, it would be a shame if something happened to your sister. <laughs> And he's like, he's like, I can give you a new body. I can, I can put you against. You just have to fight Superman. And it's like, Lex Luthor just pulling the strings in the way that I love Lex Luthor to be written. And I love that's a subplot, and it's not taking the entire story. Like each issue has been like just a little bit more of him like pushing Metallo. But yeah, no, uh, cool, cool book, and I'm excited to read. What, what yeah. about you? Sounds good. Sounds like some good Superman um, switch ups. Yeah. Um, next up for me, I have Avengers Forever 11. Um, this cover is really sick. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping for some Robbie time. He's going to, I guess, embrace the All Rider um, persona. Um, We're finally going to learn what the fuck that means. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been a really sick um, progression for Robbie's character, and I've really been loving, like, this idea that he can just host uh any anything and um control it um all the way from the beginning of avengers when he hosted a celestial which was really fucking sick yeah um to see where this this lands us and i think this is the end of this arc um yeah it's the conclusion of this arc and um it will hopefully take us right into this avengers assemble event and um yeah i'm excited to see um how this takes us into avengers assemble um i don't know when i don't know when we're getting that alpha book but i think it's pretty soon yeah um, it should be next week yeah um, um i think it's really interesting i yeah. really hope that they make him more powerful than cosmic ghost rider oh yeah no <laughs> like, i mean that, I think that is my bar knows. right now i need him to be stronger than him yeah uh, next up for me is Department of Truth number twenty-two. I actually uh, wasn't going to cover this because I was I wanted uh, Elias to get caught up I'll before. Still <laughs> yeah, you 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 will read it. I will force you. I, <laughs> I I will hold you at gunpoint and make you read it. I'll be like the cat meme where he just like holds a gun right in front of him. <laughs> um, but this is actually the last issue in the arc before they go on hiatus. I, I'm not gonna lie, I completely was not expecting this. <laughs> For it to go on, on hiatus because this has been like a slow burn of an arc but in a good way Cole's husband now knows everything about him and knows that Cole killed his journalist friends um, there's like a whole the question now is who will Cole turn to will he turn to the Ministry of Lies well I mean uh, Black Hat or Department of Truth because Black Hat has been Basically against both the Ministry of Lies and Department of Truth. And they're like the main bad guys. Like the Department of Truth is just like the Russian version. I mean, uh, the Ministry of Lies is just the Russian version of Department of Truth. Right. But Black Hat is actually like a a person that wants to, uh, organization that wants to equalize everything. Mm -hmm. And for some reason they want Cole. There's, they're, they don't understand why. Um, We just know that Cole created the Satan monster by believing in it so hard. So maybe he has the ability to by himself create uh, creatures. Maybe his like belief and stuff is so concrete that like he's able to just break the fabric of reality. I guess we'll find hmm. out. That's cool. Yeah, I'm excited to catch up on this for sure. And what's your last pick? My last pick is uh, Doctor Strange Fall Sunrise. Um, I saved this for last because I, I'm really hyped for some new um, stuff from Trad Moore. Did you read Silver Surfer Black? Yes. Yeah. So this is, I'm imagining, kind of going to be that style where he just gets to work with a character who, who can be drawn very abstractly. And, you know, this is one of my favorite Marvel characters uh, alongside with Silver Surfer. So this is going to be exciting. Yeah. Um, he's writing and drawing this um, and doing cover art and lettering, apparently, as well. <laughs> just doing everything. He's doing everything, as far as I can see. Oh, the the it's funny. Like they put Trad and Heather um, next to each other, so I think, I guess maybe that's his wife or something. 
cool. But she, yeah, she's doing the color. So that's the only thing. It'd be that cool if, if they're like doing. a duo. Yeah, that's really sick. Um, I don't know if I've ever seen her on Marvel stuff before. Um, but yeah, so this is going to be a kind of standalone strange story and um, looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I'm really excited to pick this up for the art alone. Yeah. And um, yeah, obviously we haven't had a lot of solo time with Steven in a while. Um, so this is a nice switch up. And uh, he's rocking the long hair, which is interesting. Um, I, I don't know if that puts us in a certain period. Like that yeah. might be like 80s or 90s, I want to say. Um, also the wardrobe. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm really hyped to pick this up. Um, I got high hopes. The first issue is also a, a bigger issue. It's a four ninety nine uh, book. That? Yeah. And finally, last for me, is the human target number nine. We are finally meeting Batman. <laughs> um, I'm so excited. Uh, Chance is going to literally confront Batman, which is wild because i mean batman is obviously the world's greatest detective and chance right now is trying to evade being caught as the with the murder of guy gardner so it should be interesting and i mean batman isn't known for being uh nice to people that break the law Mm -hmm. so uh it should be interesting and i mean hey the cover looks sick yeah I'm so excited for this. Yeah, this is this is my top pick for the week. Easily. I'm glad that they waited this long to have Batman show up too. Like you know, they they saved him for for last out of all the members of the JSA. Well, not even there's still uh, there's still uh, two yeah, more that guy. Well, no, there's just um, the Green Lantern, the other Green Lantern, the furry. Oh yeah, guy. you're right. But I'm I'm glad that they say Batman for like this far into it. Gnort. Yeah, Gnort. <laughs> Which um, who I've never heard of to be honest. Oh really? Apparently he's he's an actual character. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, no, he's he's like a, he's one of the first um other Green Lantern core members for them to introduce in the original DC books. These covers are just so great next to each other. It's such a great collage of covers. It's so good. So good. <laughs> Yeah, man. can't wait to read this. Yeah, but anyway, that's been our uh, our weekly polls for uh, November 23rd. We are recording this a day early, so that's why I messed up the time there. But yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. Remember to uh, like, subscribe, uh, support your local comic shop, and read comics. Peace. Peace.